And the flowers on the altar are given in honor of Marion Mitchell's birthday from her family. I want to thank all those who are helping us out in worship this morning. I want to thank our communion servers, our graduates. We thank our bell choir and manna for your gift of music. And we thank our pianist, Mary Beardall and Amy Lees. Remember in your prayers, Jordan Volkanot, Jim Aiden, Dennis Hardy, Aaron Anderson, Millie Ogdahl, Herb Peterson, and Vern Foss. And pray for those serving overseas, Mackenzie Foss and Nick Berger from our congregation. Congratulations to Nathan and Kayla Stregge, who were married here yesterday. And congratulations to Jason and Jody um, on the birth of their son, Jalen. Today, besides honoring our graduates, we also remember our mothers. Happy Mother's Day. And we share our appreciation for our Sunday school teachers. And we acknowledge our first class of preschool students. And I call on Nicole to come up at this time. Where are you? Where are you? Nicole? I'm Here's ready. Up already. <laughs> Good morning, congregation members, friends, families, and graduates. We come together this morning to recognize and honor our preschool graduates and the many others throughout the church service. Over the past year, we have come together as a church to establish a foundation for these young children. They have come through these doors to play, paint, cut, draw, build, dress up, read, write, color, learn, establish relationships with classmates and individuals who they may encounter at the church in the mornings and building on their faith journey. As you can tell from the slideshow shown earlier, you can see how blessed I've been with these students all year long and how much they have grown in all aspects through play and learning. With heartfelt gratitude, thank you families for entrusting in me to start and continue your child's school journey and to all those here at American Lutheran to make this possible. It is with my great respect and honor to welcome our first graduating class of preschoolers from American Lutheran. They will now come forward to accept their diploma along with a special prayer pillow and book and bird and bear from American Lutheran. Just a note of thanks to our congregation member, Belva Stinson, for graciously taking time to making the prayer pillows and bird and bears. And we will also present two short little poems. I want to announce Noah Lease. And Harley Zemlicka. And Jaron Borman. And Macy Mueller. And Riley Gangler. I present to you the American Lutheran Preschool Class of 2014. We'd also like to take this time to thank Nicole for teaching this year. Uh, she has gone above and beyond her duties, especially for putting up with all the issues that come with the first year and we hope we can be graced with her talents again next year.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the life beyond all death, the joy beyond all sorrow, our everlasting home. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us come before God who calls us to repentance. God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you made everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. Know that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name and that the spirit of the risen Christ is alive in you both now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I see the grace of God in my cup I seek the will of God and my cup runneth over. I seek the strength of God in my How generous is God's love, so much the world cannot contain it. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from the second chapter of the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to the number of those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It's time that we take time to honor those that are graduating, and in some cases, probably leaving our communities. We take time to honor Maddie Foss, William Hins, Morgan Jones, Claire Kastrup, Kate Letty, Kayla Pinkert, and Hannah Scriver. Dear God, what a great and joyous time it is. It's graduation, a marker of success in school, the commencement of a new era in life. But God, what a lousy and sad time it is. It's graduation. And Maddie and William and Morgan and Claire and Kate and Kayla and Hannah will never pass this way again. And it feels like we're losing something. Something's dying inside. Lead us then into the mystery of this time of graduation and help us embrace it. Teach us the power of this time where heaven and earth meet and in the passing of the old, something new is being created. Go with our graduates, God, when they leave this place, walking with them into their tomorrow, grabbing them with your strong hand when they're about to fall off the cliff of wrong choices. Thanks be to God for our graduates. Amen. God's peace. God's peace, Kayla. Kate, God's peace to you. God's peace, Claire. God's peace, Morgan. God's peace, William. God's peace, Maddie. Give these people a round of applause. God's peace.
Psalms 23 will be read responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the great gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he was brought out, all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Today's gospel text is full of familiar images and mixed metaphors about sheep and shepherding. But found within this colorful agrarian language beats the dynamic heart of the gospel. For I believe that nowhere else in Scripture does Jesus express the intent of his mission and ministry more so than in the verse 10 of today's gospel. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now that verse rests in contrast to all those things that would rob us of life, the thieves and bandits that Jesus mentions. So the major argument being made in today's gospel is that Jesus comes to give not just life, but abundant life. Not just survival, but a life that flourishes. Not just getting, giving, uh, getting by in life, but thriving. Not just existing, but living life joyfully. Jesus comes to give life in abundance. What does abundant life look like? Well, there are a few things that I glean from today's gospel that I believe puts a face on an abundant life. First, in today's gospel, there's surprisingly little talk about sin. Jesus doesn't say, I came because there's a whole bunch of sinning sheep that need forgiveness. He doesn't say that. Rather, he says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe that all of our lives and actions are tainted by sin. And I believe that we are called to repent of our sinfulness. But as I consider today's gospel and link it to other texts that share Christ's mission, texts like John 3.16, I'm struck by, by how little 
Jesus gives time to sin and how much time he gives to words about light and life and love. Which, lead me, which leads me to wonder if maybe we've narrowed how we understand and talk about the salvation that Jesus brings. All who enter by me, Jesus says, will be saved. And in past days, salvation was understood as scouring away our sinfulness rather than the creation of new life and possibilities. Forgiveness of sin is important. It's wonderful. It's freeing for many. But it often occurs to me that if that's all that the understanding of salvation is to be, then all we're really doing in life is just bringing ourselves back to square one. And we miss the life that Jesus offers, the abundant life. My wife Carol often calls me up and tells me how things are going in her classroom. And she talks about discipline in her classroom, discipline strategies for her first graders. Rarely does she say that she disciplines her students by pointing out the wrongs that they've done. Rather, she tells me that she tries to illustrate to her students the things that they are missing out on because of their behaviors. Four weeks ago, we held our celebration of Easter, and, at that, and the heart of that celebration was the resurrection promise of life and possibilities, of potential and power found in Christ. But also in that celebration was the promise that we are not saved from something, but rather we are saved for something, for life in all of its abundance, here and now. A second thought in today's gospel comes to me by way of Luther Seminary professor David Losey in his commentary on John 10. In his commentary, Professor Losey wrote that even though an abundant life isn't defined for us in the gospel, it is discussed in the ninth chapter of John's gospel by way of the healing of the man born blind. According to Losey, we can't hope to really understand today's gospel unless we look at it from the perspective of the gospel before. Loth, he then said that for the man born blind, abundant life was sight. It was a release from dependence. It was freedom and light and new opportunity. And this way of understanding today's gospel in light of the previous story in turns invites us to imagine that abundant life and perhaps salvation is highly contextual. In other words, an abundant life for the blind man was sight. For a single mom, it might be relationship and help in their daily work. For a bullied teenager, it might be acceptance and an advocate. For an impoverished neighbor, it might be dignity. For a retiree, it might be involvement in a worthwhile cause. And for our graduates, it might be positive words and supportive visioning. Abundant life looks different in different places and to different people. But it always reveals itself as a response to who or what ever seeks to rob God's sheep of their life, their purpose, their joy. So could salvation be more than the forgiveness of sin and a promise of a heavenly reward? Could salvation also be about an abundant life right here, right now? And if an abundant life is understood as a release from whatever is robbing us and also what God intends for us, then maybe today's gospel is really an invitation for you and me not just to simply follow God's promised salvation and abundant life, but actually go out into the world and do it then that begs the question, how do we go out and live into the promised abundant life? Well, I believe that happens when we join ourselves into Christ's mission to bring an abundant life to all of God's creation. And that means we must pay special attention to those things that are robbing God's own, you and me and all creation of life, by standing up against those forces. At the Vacation Bible School meeting this past week, 
One of the questions addressed was, where should our Bible school money offering go this year? Numerous ideas were suggested. Send our offering to food for the poor. Buy a cow from Heifer International to send it to someone in need. Support a Habitat for Humanity house in South Dakota. But then someone said, how about buying winter coats for people in need? I've seen people that are walking around in coats that aren't acceptable for South Dakota weather. Well, that idea genesis my mind back to my first internship site at South Blue Earth Lutheran Church. It was at that church that a young teenager, Ricky, would ride his bike to church every Sunday morning. Every Sunday, he would get on his bike and ride to, that, to our church by himself, no matter what the conditions were. Now, Ricky was a young boy who had numerous life hurdles and obstacles, too many for me to comment on this morning. But every Sunday, he was there. He was there early so he could hand out bulletins and so he could welcome the people into the church. In response to his dedication, that congregation adopted him, shared their love for him, with him. It was my first Christmas Eve at South Blue Earth, and shortly before the Christmas Eve service ended, one of the members of the congregation got up and they walked to the front of the church and bent down behind the Christmas tree and they pulled out this big package. And then they called Ricky up and they said, Ricky, come on forward. And they had him come up and then they helped him open that package. And inside was this huge purple Minnesota Vikings parka. (laughs) And all of a sudden, you should have seen Ricky's face. It was just huge, the big smile on his face. And the congregation started clapping. What a Christmas present for Ricky, for that congregation. The congregation saw their mission, at least a part of their mission, as helping take care of this young boy with many needs. And during the rest of my time at South Blue Earth Lutheran Church, I witnessed that every time we met. That congregation offered Ricky abundant life. But at the same time, as they gave Ricky that life, those members then discovered abundant life in themselves. Salvation and abundant life, like happiness, aren't goals for which we strive, but rather are byproducts of following Jesus, the one who opened the eyes of the blind, the one who fed the hungry, the one who comforted the distraught, and everywhere and always witness to the ever-living, ever-giving love of our God. The abundant life. It's when we walk out of those doors and we share God's love. Amen. The King of love, my shepherd is Lord, on this day, we set aside time to honor and remember. But today, we especially give our thanks for our mothers. 
We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gifts of your life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood, whether a birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else. We thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they show us and they would be pleased to be called our moms. Would you please stand as we honor our moms? We pray for older moms whose children are grown. We pray for new moms experiencing changes they could not predict. We pray for pregnant women who will soon be moms. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. We pray for moms who are raising their children in poverty. We pray for stepmoms. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. We pray for moms who have lost children. We pray for adoptive mothers. And we pray for girls and women who think about being moms. We pray for all women who have assumed the mother's role in a child's life. And we pray for those people present who are grieving the loss of their mothers. Lord, we thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for the many examples of faithful mothers in Scripture like Sarah, Hannah, and Elizabeth. We are mindful this day of all these women, and especially Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had the courage and faith to say yes to your calling. May these women gather here today, emulate these examples of faith, and may they model for all the rest of us what it means to be your disciple. Bless them on this special day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Made alive in Christ and filled with the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, your voice sings in the church. Bless our worship that sharing bread and communion we also share abundantly with people in every place. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Your voice sings in creation. Preserve pastures and city parks, oceans and local water sources, so that nature provides life and protection for all creatures. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, Beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Your voice sings among the nations. Curb the desire for vengeance. Turn us from dishonest speech and deceitful living. Lead us into your truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears from death into life. Your voice sings among those in need, the poor, the homeless, the suffering, the afflicted, the ill and hospitalized, for those who will die this day. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Your voice sings in our homes. Open the hearts of those who provide mothering care that Christ's love will be revealed in the generosity shown to all of our children. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. O God, giver and sustainer of all life, we ask your blessing upon our graduates as they stand at the threshold of a new adventure. In their living and loving, may they always remember that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We give thanks for the saints who, having followed your voice in this life, now dwell with you forever, joining their voices in endless praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and dwell in us richly through Jesus Christ, our life and our Redeemer. Amen. God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace with one another. God's peace, clear. God's peace, Morgan. God's peace, Maggie. God's peace, Kate. Hannah. God's peace, Smith. God's peace. God's peace, Wayne. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, neighbor. Noah, God's peace to you. God's peace, man. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace to you. God's peace. God's peace to you. God's peace to you.
us from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hope, send dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a full taste of the feast to come. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be redeemed. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. And for that reason, we sing together our holies. We, we, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna to the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Please be seated.
From the burden of sin, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. Precious blood.
has promised good to me. His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my Loving God, by your spirit we are born anew and you nourish us like newborns with his, this holy food by which we grow into salvation. Give us grace to live as your risen daughters and sons, shining in the world with your marvelous light until you gather all creation to the heavenly table where Christ reigns in glory forever. Amen. At this time I would ask all those people that have helped us out this past year in any way, shape, or form in our Sunday school program, if you would stand. Carol, get up. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, you made cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed are you who are called to teach, for you walk in the footsteps of the Master. Blessed are you who sow peace and harmony in the classroom. Yours will be the joy of the Lord. Blessed are you who plant seeds of hope in youthful hearts, for you will inherit the dawn. Blessed are you who are sensitive to the cries of youth today, for they yearn for the coming of the kingdom. Blessed are you when you anguish now because your students are difficult. For one day they will thank you for your loving concern. Blessed are you when efficiency is moderated by compassion and empathy. For the deeper secret of education is yours. Blessed are you when you reach out to me in your students. For you will surely find me and rejoice. Blessed are you who lead young people in the paths of justice and peace, for you will shine like the stars of all eternity. Amen. We thank our teachers this year, and, and we ask that you come after the service and pick up a flower. And we thank again you so much for all that you do. Please stand. And receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So guide uphold you with the shepherd's care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. We meet till we meet till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet till we peace, share the good news.